正会。Rebirth of the malicious empress of military lineage, Chapter 125, compelled to compete. The tribute banquet was filled with merriment, and everyone were toasting with one another. Suddenly, making it as if it was a peaceful scene. It was only at the noble guests' area that Emperor Wen Hua spoke to the Crown Prince of Qin, Huang Fu Hao, who was somewhat restraining fear. When this was seen by others, naturally they were well aware of it. Among the three countries, Qin, Great Liang, and Mingqi, the Mingqi was the weakest. Followed by the Qin country, and the Great Liang was the strongest. That Emperor Yang Le's actions were always valiant. Which made the Qin country and the Mingqi to feel fear, and so they would be very respectful to this Prince Ruai of the Great Liang. As for Huang Fu Hao, when he was speaking to Prince Ruai, there were many words of probing. Most of the female guests' eyes were stuck on this Prince Ruai. Each and every action and movement from Prince Ruai warmed their hearts and delighted their eyes. There were no shortage of outstanding males in Mingqi, just like Fu Ziyu Yi. But in front of this Prince Ruai, all of them were not as elegant and noble-looking, and instead seemed shoddy. Even though Lu Tan loved beautiful people, but she had the temperament of a gust of wind, so she was soon attracted by the delicate and delicious food. Happily trying this and that, because the tribute feast does not distinguish between male and female guests, the entire official family sat together. Lu Ling also sat near Shen Miao's, and when he saw that Shen Miao was not eating, He placed a snowflake cake onto Shen Miao's plate and warmly said, "Be a younger sister, eat something, else one will not have energy to return." Shen Kaiyu originally wanted to give Shen Miao a piece, but Lu Ling had preempted his attempt, and he did not know where to put the snowflake cake in this chopsticks. His bowl was already full, and moreover, what kind of man would eat a snowflake cake? He thought for a moment before putting it in front of Feng and Ning. Who was sitting nearest to Shen Miao? Feng Anning was overwhelmed by the favor as she accepted it and said her thanks. But she did not eat it and was looking at the snowflake cake in a daze. But just at this moment, one heard Huang Fu Hao suddenly speaking. Ben Gong heard that the formidable great general, General Shen, has returned to the capital a few days before. The name of the formidable great general was one that Ben Gong always hear about. But do not know if one have the honor to see. When the remarks were spoken, the lively banquet suddenly quieted down. The crown prince of the Qin country wanted to see Shen Zin. What was the meaning of it? Shen Zin and the crown prince of the Qin were practically not related at all. But now one of them was the great general that Emperor Wen Hua recalled back to the Ding capital, and the other was the Qin country's crown prince. Both had very sensitive identities. Everyone could not help but look at Emperor Wen Hua's facial expression. Emperor Wen Hua's smile remained unchanged, as if this was just a very small request. And he looked at Shen Zin, beloved official Shen. Shen Zin quickly got up and bowed to Huang Fu Hao before saying, "This general greets Your Highness, the Crown Prince." Huang Fu Hao smiled. One had long heard that General Shen is brave and fierce without rival. That even in the border, one could also transform a scattered army to shape. When the Shen family's army returned to the capital, the commoners were even cheering. He then gave a long sigh. If my great kin could have such a military talent, one need not worry for a hundred of years. Emperor Wen Hua's pupils shrank unnoticed as the minister's expressions in the banquet changed. And their gazes became extremely complex as they looked at Shen Zin. To say that Shen Zin was able to connect the scattered army in a short period of time might sound like praising Shen Zin's extraordinary ability, but obscurely mentioned about the danger of Shen Zin. Wind damages the flourishing trees in the forest, and that had been the logic since ancient times. To have such high regards by the commoners for an emperor who expelled the general out of the capital. It meant that between the imperial family and Shen Zin, the commoners had chosen to stand at Shen Zin's side. No imperial family would be able to tolerate subordinates who had a more popular approval than themselves. As for the last sentence, it was the real push that placed Shen Zin to the edge of where the wind and waves were the fiercest. Huang Fu Hao was poaching Shen Zin in front of Emperor Wen Hu. No matter how much ulterior motives the Ming Qi's officials harbored. They would always have unanimously band together against external enemies, 
so the gazes that were looking at Shen Xin, were like looking at a living general who committed treason. Shen Miao's gaze deepened as she coldly stared at Huang Fu Hao. Huang Fu Hao was someone who likes to watch others in trouble, as if there was a wickedness in the blood of the Ken country's imperial family. Currently Shen Xin was not even antagonistic towards the Ken country, but Huang Fu Hao still refused to let them off. This was perhaps a destined hatred. Emperor Wen Hua had yet to speak when one heard a soft chuckle. Everyone looked towards the sound and saw that among the noble guests, Prince Ruai had placed the wine cup in his hands down and looked towards Huang Fu Hao. His voice was deep and pleasant to hear and there was also a touch of lazy intoxication, bringing out a little bewitching power, but his words were not polite at all. He said, since brother Huang Fu admired General Shen that much, one may discuss with the emperor to obtain, and if the emperor is generous, he would not disagree. This was clearly pushing the boat with the currents and when it fell into others' ears, there were thousands of feelings. How could Huang Fu Hao really want Shen Xin? It was only to push Shen Xin to the edge of the cliff and watch him walk in trouble. If Emperor Wen Hua really gave Shen Xin to him then due to the kin's face, they could only support Shen Xin well. But who knew if Shen Xin was Emperor Wen Hua's spy? The Ken country and the Ming Chi were still in a mutual relationship, and neither was willing to place a not trustable person under their eyes, and look for trouble all day long. Emperor Wen Hu also thought about this point and the peculiar look in his gaze gradually dispersed, and his previous appearance was back on. He laughed. All under heavens cherish the talented. If the crown prince insist on wanting General Shen, Zen can only follow others' precept, as it is the sincerest form of respect. This time it was Huang Fu Hao that was placed in an awkward position. He was very excited but now was caught in a more adverse situation. It was not possible to bring this person back but to end the matter like this, it would be as if one had lost face. All this happened because of that Prince Ruai's words. Huang Fu Hao glanced secretly at the man with a mask and almost engraved that person in his eyes. Princess Ming and was together with Huang Fu Hao and seeing that he was in a difficult situation at this moment, naturally thought of how to unbind him from the situation. It is just that for one, she could not afford to offend Prince Ruai and two, she cannot afford to offend the great Liang's people. Her entire stomach of fire was poured towards the Shen family and as she looked at Shen Xin, she suddenly started laughing. Her voice was delicate and originally sounded sweet but at this moment with her attitude, it was a bit sharp. She said, how can one dare to take such a great general like General Shen back? Such bravery would make Ben Gong's and older brother Crown Prince's head ache. It will be better to bring young Lady Shen back. One heard that young Lady Shen is the pearl of General Shen's palm and a beauty. One do not know if our great kin have such a fortune. Lu Tan and Feng and Ning suddenly grabbed onto Shen Miao's hands and their eyes became vigilant. Lu Ling slightly moved. Shen Kaiyu's and Lu Zhu Yan's faces turned grave as Shen Xin looked ferociously at Princess Mingan. Shen Miao however was looking down at the teacup in front of her, as if she did not hear Princess Mingan's words. She only watched the teacup, as the tea spinned on the surface and slowly sank down to the bottom of the cup. A general of a country could not be taken away. But to want a daughter of an official was something as easy as a breeze. If one wanted to have good relations with the kin country, there were instances of marrying a princess or official's daughter over. But no one was willing to enter a foreign country let alone marry, as there would not be any help from one's father or brothers. So if one really suffered grievances, one could only swallow it down themselves. Shin Zin smiled. Little daughter is naughty and mischievous and cannot afford to have the princess's interest. The meaning behind those words were to bluntly refusing it. Emperor Wen Hua's eyes were far reaching, but he did not intend to say anything to resolve this conflict. Shen Xin had a straightforward character but once it involved Shen Miao, he would take an extremely tough stance. At the other side when Shen Yu saw this. There was rejoice of Shi Miao's misfortune in her eyes. She could not wait to let Shen Miao marry to the Ken country, and it would be best to marry her to an old man as a concubine, and torture her to death in a foreign land. That Princess Mingan did not expect that Shen Xin would not give her any face and be rejected, so some unhappiness appeared on her face. Because her words had passed the matter about Shen Xin over, 
Huang Fu Hao could not continue and also was too lazy to do so. He sat by himself, and drank leisurely while watching Princess Ming and make things difficult for the Shen family. Princess Ming and said, one cannot say that. Everyone knows that General Shen's daughter have both integrity and talent. So is it young Lady Shen that looked down on Ben Gong, and is unwilling to greet Ben Gong at all? To place such a big hat of discourteous on, even if Shen Miao was trying to cover the matter up, she would not be able to do so. She simply stood up magnanimously and greeted Princess Ming An. This official daughter greets your Princess Highness. She suddenly stood up and everyone's gaze landed on Shen Miao's. Two years was enough to make a lot of changes. This include everyone's deeply engraved impression of the idiotic daughter, as this was just too far away and one gradually became indifferent. The young lady that stood up in front, was a total different person from their memories. The lilac purple robes highlighted the fairness of her jade-like complexion. Even after spending two years in the Zhaochun city, the sandy winds did not worn down her skin, but instead she grew up to look more noble. Her eyebrows were as delicate and beautiful as a painting, and her gestures were so dignified. Soft and strong, both were strangely fused into her body and appeared as a type of dignified grace. Even the empress beside the emperor, did not seem to have her grace. Princess Ming and frowned. She did not expect that Shen Miao had such good appearance and bearing. She had long known of Shen Miao's reputation of an idiot, thus she brought her up as a topic to embarrass the Shen family. She had never thought that she was lifting a rock to smash her own feet. However, for Princess Ming and to be Princess Ming and, she has some abilities. She immediately raised her eyebrows, and looked up and down at Shen Miao like she was sizing something up before saying, Young Lady Shen has a countenance of a flower, face like the moon, indeed an outstanding beauty. No wonder General Shen treats Young Lady Shen as a pearl in his palm and head. One did not know with such good appearance which family would have the fortune to marry young lady. These words were overstepping and Shin Zin immediately stared like a tiger. Although he must take into account the other person's position, he could not tolerate others say things about his daughter. Just as he was about to speak, that Princess Ming and diverged from the topic, one think that young lady Shen also has outstanding abilities. When those words were spoken, Everyone in the hall was excited. Yi Pei Lan and the few were resisting smiling with great difficult. What talent did Shen Miao had? That was something everyone knew very well. These two years she had gone to the Zhaochun city, and that was a frontier area with so many military people. One fear that she had become more vulgar. Shen Miao looked down slightly. This official's daughter is of humble talent and shallow learning. The princess have praised too much. Young Lady Shen need not be modest. Princess Ming and simply smiled, speaking of which, when Ben Gong was in the Qin country, one heard a few years ago that during the academy examinations, young Lady Shen achieved a first rank for archery. When Ben Gong heard it, one's heart was moved. Now upon seeing young Lady Shen, one thought about this old matter. Shen Miao's head was bowed and she remained silent. Lu Zhu Yan's and Shen Kaiyu's hearts started to be anxious. One would be blind if one could not see that Princess Ming and was deliberately finding faults, and targeting Shen Miao. Speaking of that, everyone thought about the time during the Chrysanthemum Banquet's Academy examinations. Shen Miao and Kai Lin competed in archery and the third arrow that was shot made Kai Lin speechless and put him in a sorry state. It was exactly at that time, that a completely different Shen Miao appeared in front of everyone for the first time. Just nice at the tribute dinner, Kai Darin and Kai Lin were present, and Kai Lin's face immediately became red. Now Kai Lin was two years older and had grown up. Those little grudges with Shen Miao were already long thrown in the back of his mind as time goes on, and he was also no longer obsessed with Shen Yu. It could be said that one smile can make one forget about gratitude and revenge, but he did not expect that one's old matter was mentioned in front of everyone, making him incredibly embarrassed. Kai Lin was not the only one that was thinking about matters of the past. At the corner of the tribute banquet, the Marquis of Linen, Zi Ding, was sitting with his two sons. The current Marquis of Linen looked much older and no longer had high spirits, 
that in such an event like this, he only wanted to find a quiet corner. Unexpectedly with the mention about the matter of the academy examinations, he then remembered that at that time Xi Jingxing was present, and surprisingly went up the stage and beaten his two Shu sons out of their horses. Upon returning to the residence he scolded Xi Jingxing in fury but in his heart, he was proud of Xi Jingxing. Thinking of olden times, his heart gotten more painful and difficult to tolerate. Xi Ding's face was filled with dejectedness and Xi Chang Wu and Xi Chang Zhao, who were beside, saw this and the same flash of dark clouds appeared in their eyes. Princess Ming and still continued speaking, Ben Gong's heart have the interest today and want to compete with young Lady Shen, so why not compete in archery? Just treat it as it is a game. This remark was strange and absurd. Emperor Wen Hua laughed first, Young Lady Shen is a delicate female, so how could one know anything about archery? Your Majesty do not know. Princess Ming and said with a laugh, originally young Lady Shen's grace was even heard of in the great kin. It is said that when the father is a lion, the daughter cannot be a dog. General Shen is so incredibly brave and courageous, so young Lady Shen would definitely be an extraordinary female. Moreover, young Lady Shen is a pretty and delicate female, but is not Ben Gong also a female? Or could it be that your majesty find that our great kin cannot compete on an equal level with the Ming Chi? Princess Ming and looked charming but her words were very vicious. In one sentence she even brought out the entire nation of Ming Chi and if one did not compete, it meant that the Ming Chi looked down on the great kin. At such a time, how would Emperor Wen Hua let a gap appear between the great kin and the Ming Chi? He looked towards Shen Miao at once and said seemingly warm, What does young lady Shen think? Shen Xin clenched his fists. He really wanted to directly reject this rude request for Shen Miao. But if one were to reject, it would only let Princess Ming and have a justifiable reason to use. It was however Shen Miao who glanced at Princess Ming and, and said as she lowered her head, the princess commands, this official daughter dare not not comply, dare not not comply. At the end she had indicated the reluctance in her heart as if Princess Ming and was a bully. Princess Ming and heard the meaning behind Shen Miao's words, and her expression sank before she thought of something and giggled delicately. One heard that during the academy examinations, young Lady Shen and the opponent gambled their life to compete. So why not we too also compete by gambling our lives too? No. Shen Xin did not wait for Shen Miao to speak, and flatly refused it. His face turned cold and he did not take into account Emperor Wen Hua's expression, before looking at Princess Ming and, and said word for word, Your Highness the Princess had said that it will be a game so it should be carried out as a game, so why the need to include one's life? The tribute banquet is a happy event and it is not advisable to see knives and swords during the banquet. When Lu Zhu Yin saw Shen Xin speaking, she also could not resist but to pinch the teacup in front of her. At that time, they did not know about Shen Miao and Kai Lin gambling with their lives during the academy examinations, and when they got to know it upon their return to the capital, they had incessantly palpitations. If they were present, they would definitely not let Shen Miao use her life as a gambling stake. Now this Princess Ming and from the Ken country clearly had ill intentions, so how could they let Shen Miao take the risks? Who knew that when Shen Xin said those words, Huang Fu Hao unexpectedly opened his mouth and said with a laugh, Even so, this is to make one treat the game seriously, and this represent the great Ken's heart to the Ming Chi, General Shen. It is only letting young Lady Shen to play a game with one's younger sister, can it be that General Shen is afraid? Or is it that the Ming Chi is as such and cannot afford to lose? His words were filled with barbs as he looked towards Emperor Wen Hu. If the Ming Chi is afraid of losing, then it is of no harm to let Ming and have her spirit stampened. Since the matter had risen to the reputation of the country, if Emperor Wen Hu remained silent, he would have been humiliated in front of the officials. And how would he then be able to stand up as a monarch? He did not look at Shen Xin and directly said to Shen Miao, Since Princess Ming is interested, Shen Miao, you will accompany Princess Ming and to play for a round. Since the emperors had spoken, it was useless for Shen Xin to say anything else. Shen Kaiyu clenched both of his fists, and Lu Tan and Feng and Ning looked at one another uneasily. Shen Miao said softly, 
Yes, there was no panic in her expression and that made everyone slightly startled. Princess Ming and looked over at Shen Miao and met her gaze. Shen Miao's eyes were extremely clear, as if they were as flawless as those of a child. Originally with this pair of eyes, one could see about anything with just one look. But when such a pair of eyes looked at Princess Ming An, those calm eyes seemed to have precipitated a thousand of years of water and a single wave could not be incited. Thus one could not see any trace of emotion. Others were unable to see thoroughly. Princess Ming and did not have any reason to be upset, and she smiled as she got her personal maid to bring bow and arrows over. She then laughed as she stared at Shen Miao. This is the rules that Ben Gong plays within the great kin. Both persons will stay at a distance staring at the other and would not move. One person will be blindfolded as one uses the bow, and also will determine the location of which part of the body the effruit will be at. The person will just need to shoot at it. She did not let any expression of Shen Miao slip by, does young lady Shen understand? Everyone surrounding sucked in a breath of cold air. Last time at the academy examinations, Shen Miao and Kai Lin separately placed the effruit on their heads and their eyes were open wide. To shoot while being blindfolded, was not this playing with other people's life? Just listening to it made one feel absolutely horrified. Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan were already very furious. Shen Miao gently smiled, as if she was not scared by Princess Ming An's words and said, thanking Princess for informing. She being this calm did not lose the Ming Chi's vigor and on the spot, half of the people immediately could not help but value her higher. Huang Fu Hao stared at her and an odd look appeared in his eyes. Lu Tan pulled the corner of Shen Miao's robes, be a youngest sister, why not I go for you? I practice martial arts and know a little. If it is impossible, then one can just avoid it. Shen Miao shook her head, and looked towards Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan who still wanted to block it. No need to worry. Since she could say that, it meant that she has the confidence not to shoot me. If she were to shoot me, then they would be in a lot of trouble. Huang Fu Hao and Ming An are clever people and will not do silly things. These actions are all done just to scare me and make a fool out of me. But younger sister, Shen Kaiyu held her shoulder worriedly, you will be scared alone. No matter if she were to shoot you, how can one let you go alone? I am not afraid. Shen Miao warmly replied, moreover if she were to hurt me, I will also have a chance, so how will I let her off easily? When she said those words, the corner of her lips slightly hooked up. She was clearly smiling but it made others feel a chill. Lu Ling patted Shen Miao's shoulder and said lightly, be careful. Shen Miao nodded her head and went directly to the middle of the hall. She and Princess Ming and actually walked together towards the main area of the hall. But if one did not compare one would not know that when both of them walked together, there was a wrong illusion that appeared. Princess Ming An was a true blue blood nobility, growing up in an imperial family with a delicate, charming and beautiful frame, and should be respectable and honorable. But when walking beside Shen Miao, one of Shen Miao's hands was on top of the other with a perfectly straight back, and she did not glance to the left of right when she walked and looked at the other at high level. That dignified air of grace and bearing, actually made Princess Ming and seem worthless. Gradually, sighs were heard in the hall. Huang Fu Hao's expression gradually became ugly. In all fairness it was not because of Princess Ming An's insolent appearance, but it was Shen Miao's calmness and magnanimity that made others beside her, to look like filthy with grime. However when one think about it, it was outrageous as Shen Miao was obviously a daughter of an official, and Princess Ming and grew up in a palace since young, so how could she not be comparable to Shen Miao? They naturally did not know, that Shen Miao was originally an empress for many years in the inner palace and because of Fu Zayu Yi, she was extremely demanding of herself to be the absolute best, and when she was in the Ken country, she also eventually developed a different level of tolerance through experience. If there was not for the existence of my fear in fighting in the dark and Fu Zayu Yi's connivance, actually she would have been a good empress that could mother the entire nation. It was only that this perfect dream was at the end broken into pieces in the past, but this made her to be unable to conceal her brilliance in this lifetime. Princess Ming and did not notice everyone's stares, 
and only looked at Shen Miao as she held the shiny black longbow in her hands. That bow most likely, was made of top-notch wood and was soaked in special herbs as it looked very hard and cumbersome. Princess Ming and said to Shen Miao, this is Ben Gong's bow. Let us shoot one bamboo arrow each alright? Ben Gong will shoot an arrow at you, then it will be changed to you pulling the bow. The words spoken had already set the sequential order. At the side of Ming Chi, there were people who had indignant expressions, as Princess Ming and was obviously bullying others. But Shen Miao only indifferently complied and she appeared not to be shaken. The more she appeared not to care, the more Princess Ming and felt stifled and panicky. She swept her eyes across the noble guests section, and suddenly her eyes brightened before she sweetly said, but since we are competing here, one fear that the other will feel unfair about it. Why not let His Highness Prince Ruai of the Great Liang be the judge, and stand here to inspect the bow and arrows to ensure that there is no fraud. Finishing. Her eyes looked at Prince Ruai affectionately. The young females of Ming Chi that were seated, were scolding this Princess Ming and in their hearts for being ignorant of shame. This was clearly taking the opportunity to get closer to Prince Ruai, and one felt that it was due to being attracted to Prince Ruai's beauty. However Prince Ruai's actions were usually unbridled and one thought that he would not agree to it. Since Princess Ming and's request came out of nowhere, who knew that when Prince Ruai heard it, he thought a little before nodding, all right. This was once again beyond the expectations of everyone, and even Emperor Wen Hu and Huang Fu Hao took a double take at Prince Ruai. One only saw Prince Ruai stood up lazily from his seat and as his legs were long, he only took two steps to reach the middle of the hall and stood beside Shen Miao and Princess Mingan. Princess Mingan overjoyed at the turn of events and delicately reached her hands out to put the bow into Prince Ruai's hands and smiled, then may Prince Ruai first inspect this bow and see if there are any issues. At the prince's sitting area, Prince Zhao sneered and whispered, this Ken princess is not one who knows her place, and actually make things difficult in front of so many people. These words used were filled with disdain, but the young lady of the Shen family is really unexpected. Prince Jing looked at Shen Miao who was standing side by side with Princess Ming An, to be so calm, even if it was an act, it is an extraordinary courage. Speaking of which, Prince Zhu touched his chin, this young lady of the Shen family has really blossomed and gotten more tasteful. He looked towards Fu Zayu Yi who was not speaking a single word, number 9, do you regret? Fu Zayu Yi lightly said. Fourth older brother is joking. Behind Fu Zayu Yi, there was a plainly clad male quietly standing there. His gaze crossed over everyone and fell onto the purple clad young female. Pei Lang looked very calm, as if he was looking at a stranger for the first time, but the hands in his sleeves were clenched into fists and were also slightly trembling. It had been two years. This young female grew up to be even more attractive and like what she had said she was invited back by the heavenly family. Upon returning back to the capital, trouble came knocking one after another. Trees long for peace but the wind would never cease. Shen Miao did not do anything, but there would be people who will take the initiative to look for her. However Pei Lang knew that Shen Miao would not let herself be caught in any awkward position. This was because she has a heart that was more vicious than anyone else. Prince Ruai returned the bow to Princess Ming and quickly and she took it back shyly before saying to Shen Miao, may young lady Shen stand over there and. She picked an apple from the maid and handed it to Shen Miao with a smile, place this on young lady's shoulder. Shen Kaiyu who was sitting down suddenly clenched his fist, yes. Shen Miao's eyes hanged and walked away after taking the apple. Everyone were all looking at her actions while Princess Ming and allowed others to tie a black cloth over her eyes. Prince Ruai however walked over to Shen Miao's side. Under watchful eyes, he took the apple from Shen Miao's hands. Shen Miao was surprised for a moment as Prince Ruai placed the apple gently on her shoulder. Shen Miao looked up at him. Because there was something on her shoulder, she was afraid that the apple will fall off during big movements. So Shen Miao could only look at him motionlessly. The young male was very tall and even if Shen Miao had groaned within these two years, 
She only reached to the level of his chest. She could see his embroidered gold buttons and also perceived the meaningful look in his eyes. The silver mask exposed the handsome man's chin and red lips. The corner of his mouth was slightly hooked up, making one want to take the mask off to see if the person had a smiling expression on. His dark eyes were like the starts and autumn water. When they look over, it seemed to be gentle but also looked like they were bantering. Bantering? He placed the apple on Shen Miao's shoulder and bent one finger to stroke Shen Miao's hair, like gently caressing a little captive beast. But it was only for a short moment before it was withdrawn. Because of his body blocking at the side, when others looked over, they would only feel that this Prince Ruai of the Great Liang was only placing the apple properly onto Shen Miao and did not make any other action. He turned and walked to the side, and looked as if he was watching a good show as he folded his hands. Shen Miao's attention once again was attracted to Princess Ming and as Princess Ming and slowly pulled open the bow. That bow seemed to be very heavy and Princess Ming and pulled it open arduously. As she pulled laboriously, the more the bow arched, the heavier everyone's hearts were. Especially Shen Xin's entire family. Their faces were as deep as water. The fuller the bow was bent, the more strength Princess Ming and had, and the greater the strength the arrowhead had, meant that Shen Miao was even more at danger. One fear that when the arrow was shot, the residue force was able to knock Shen Miao down. This match before one's eyes was not like what Princess Ming and mentioned, just a game, but instead it was a big matter regarding a country's reputation. If one lost, the reputation was gone. If one showed fear, the reputation was also gone. Actually, between Shen Miao and Princess Ming'an, everyone were optimistic about Princess Ming'an, and hoped that Shen Miao would not lose too badly. Shen Miao quietly looked at the black cloth that was tied in front of Princess Ming'an's eyes. One did not know if Princess Ming'an was deliberately torturing Shen Miao, as she pulled the bow very slowly and the longbow let out a thin sound that lingered in the hearts of everyone present. Shen Miao's eyes were dazed, as what appeared in front of her was not the tribute banquet, but the foreign kin country. The princes and princesses of the kin country and the officials' daughters were surrounding her and ridiculing her. She was wearing a robe which was restitched numerous times, and there was a F fruit on her shoulder as she looked wide-eyed at the person opposite her. That person opposite was arrogant and despotic, and wore exquisitely clothes with eyes tied with a white cloth. She publicized to the crowd around her, See, today let the Ming Chi's Empress hold up an apple on her head for Ben Gong. Later you all see clearly for Ben Gong if this Ming Chi's Empress from a military lineage, would be so scared that she pee in her pants? Ha ha ha. One must see clearly and tell Ben Gong. She arrogantly pulled the bow and that arrow shot out with a Zayu. She shot off a little, but it was from the left to right and top to bottom and shot through Shen Miao's hair, shotting open her clothes. Shen Miao screamed in panic and covered her clothes tightly, but could hear that ridiculing laughter getting louder. What a humiliating memory. But it now all started to combine together. Shen Miao's lips slowly hooked up but she did not know if it was bitterness or hatred, as a dark fog slowly spread to the bottom of her clear eyes making them unfathomable. Prince Ruai who was at the side begun to quietly bend his fingers, and paused for a while before quietly releasing. Her small movements of slightly tilting her shoulder were so small, that everyone could not see them at all. 